Okay, the next speaker is Son Jin Kim from National Jinfa University. He will tell us the important NAP multi wavelength data set. So this is basis for all of your science. So please welcome Son Jin. So before jumping to this, I would like to thank you, everyone, for participating in this conference. So many people, you know, many online, uh, you cannot see here many people connected in our system, right? And local participants here in this room. <coughs> our conference has been a quite a big one, you know, for the past few for the past few years, but this year it it became online, right? Because of this pandemic situation, and it got bigger. It <laughs> got much bigger than I thought it would be. So we here, we have uh, around 20 people in this room, but did you see the number of more than 15, between 15 and 60 people uh, here? So, so the title of my talk is like this. So just before Agnieszka gave us a brilliant talk about uh, big data, but I'm going to uh, summarize about what, uh, what we have done. So it's about the uh, Akari Infra data plus HSC data. So I'm going to be talking about the uh, multi wavelength data based on this Akari infrared data and newly obtained HSC survey data. So maybe I can say it again that uh, our conference is support, has been supported by uh, HIA, NTHU, PRPC, and uh, PRPC. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, so why infrared data? Is it, is it important? Oh, sorry, I, sorry about this. <coughs> My voice is too low, right? Can I use a microphone? I need This is microphone, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, to answer the questions about the cosmic star formation history and galaxy evolution, so it is really important to under, uh, have a have a comprehensive understanding about the infrared luminous population of galaxies, because they are star forming systems containing a large amount of dust, where a critical phase of star formation or aging activities are taking place hidden behind the obscuring dust like this so um, normally star forming regions star forming regions are surrounded by uh, surrounded by dust like this and agents have dust to us like this so what uh, how it looks or why how they looks or what we can observe is totally depends on the viewing angle so, and then the infrared series of galaxies dramatically changes according to their types. So, which is also gives us a good explanation why infrared is important. So, actually, the role of dust is important, but not just as an obscuring materials, but also as a uh, major component of participating in the galaxy evolution process. So, um, okay. so as we see here in the prominent feature in the medium infrared range here, uh, so called as power and broad peak here in the fine infrared range, this too shows the the dust in the galaxies has plays a significant role. So, um, we got the uh, Akari uh, data, mm, the legacy survey from Akari on the HNEP field gave us a unique and uh, valuable data set. Uh, it covers 5.4 scale, scale degrees here, and 
The wavelength range is con uh, between near to mid range from 2 to 25 micron, continuously without any filter gaps. So, but unfortunately, uh, this data set uh, has not been fully available for more than seven, eight years because mm, about 30% of the near infrared source detected by Akari uh, has been unidentified by optical data because of the insufficient, in, insufficient depth or uh, incomplete area coverage of the optical data. So that means we didn't even have a useful information like uh, optical magnitude, optical um, photometry data, or even photometry redshift for a long time. So uh, also, uh, as you see, this uh, is a green color and gray color shows the previous optical data covered by CFAT and 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 my God, this night is to use. <laughs> so, um, what I so these two data has been supporting the Akari infrared data uh, until we got the HSC data. But uh, two different uh, filter system in these two different previous optical data didn't uh, give any help when we are uh, doing some um, you know, homogeneous analysis or consistent analysis. So that's why we propose uh, the optical HSC data. So also we have additional uh, supplementary data covered by from by the uh, ground-based uh, telescope as well as the space telescope like the speech of her show. So, mm -hmm. but the most importantly, uh, the entire NAP wider region is covered by the uh, HAC data analysis. So, uh, this uh, small boxes uh, represent the uh, small patch region observed by HAC. So this shows the uh, depth of various surveys with different uh, instrument and filter systems. So, um, okay. so, so this is first time doing it like this, right? So it's a little bit trouble. Um, so okay. So we got a deeper uh, detection limit, like uh, 1.7 or 2.5 magnitude deeper compared to the previous optical data. So we finally got uh, 20,000 infrared sources newly identified by deeper HSC data. So we presented a little bit a typical galaxy temp model template here at a little bit different relationship to here, point three. So maybe without this uh, deeper HSC data, we cannot identify this kind of uh, galaxy types. So uh, this shows uh, how we merged the data together. So we started with the HSC uh, versus Akari source matching. So we got the 91,000 sources first, and then we and then later we merged all these data together. So this merge merge catalog is now uh, released, and it's going to be appear in the MNRAs soon. So I think uh, this is, uh, we discussed using a color color diagram, but uh, a little, I don't want to go uh, too much detail here, but the interesting thing is uh, the solar sequence is, uh, stays together with the external, ah, the black dots represent uh, local galaxies with the redshift, uh, photometric redshift. Uh, less than one, and gray uh, dots uh, represent the high resolution galaxies with uh, photometric resolution higher than one, and purple cyan dots represent uh, galactic stars. So these uh, four different types of sources are identified by 
just uh, a CD feed using the feed when we try to estimate uh, the automatic ratio. But this, uh, these two, uh, four different types, star, agent, and submeter, these are these three different types are based on the spectroscopic observation, and this is our new scalar two data. So interesting thing is the star sequence is uh, mm -hmm. stay together with uh, mm -hmm. the electroelectric sources, but uh, near infrared bands is involved. Uh, once near infrared data is involved, like this in N2, N4, the star sequence uh, kind of uh, separated from the other types of sources. And then in the near infrared color curve diagrams, these are uh, various near infrared color curve diagrams, but Mm. In the near infrared color cloud, they are stayed together, but in the circular or elliptical forms, not in a, a track or a sequence. And they uh, slowly uh, disappear in the longer wavelength band. And one si uh, interesting thing is N2, N4 color. Uh, optical color, in the optical color color diagrams and the near infrared optical color color diagrams, the local galaxies and high galaxies uh, stay seems to be they stay together, but in N2 N2 bands are uh, really affected to separate these kind of two different types of galaxies. And this is uh, what we have done so far since we started the band merging project. So early last year, from the luminous forms updates to uh, uh, from until now, we have done this. So these three papers are in press. And also in, in our conference here in conference 2020, you can s uh, still see the full ongoing project. Our uh, smart uh, students, Artem, Oliver, and David, they are going to talk about some interesting results using based on this uh, than the most colorful. Also, uh, I hope you all can listen to this talk. This is about the current and future surveys on the MEP field. So please uh, don't miss these five talks. So I think I can stop here. OK, thank you, Sun Jin. I, I guess Jin has a question yeah. or no? Oh, I'm going to ask you more. Can I comment? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Hi, Sonjin. Uh, nice talk. Uh, one tiny question from my side is Do you have a plan to obtain much deeper J or H or K band, I mean the near infrared, ground based data still is it's missing? Yeah, K band data is not included yet. I mean. Oh. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't have any large area cover, covering the, all the NEP wide area. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, can someone comment, or maybe Dennis or someone else? <laughs> I think we can include K band data later. But somehow, uh, the, in this paper, MLS paper, we didn't include K band data. Oh, no. I, I, I know that. Yes. But uh, I'm just talking on the future prospects to obtain such kind of data. Actually, this is my inquiry. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not writing that. Uh, yes, we have been data efficiency. Uh, 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 data. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Well, thank you, for raising this point. I think it's very, very important. And uh, in my opinion, I think we should continue writing proposals to get the HK data mm -hmm. even little by little. I think, like Dennis did the K-band, that then we should keep continuing writing proposals, getting J-band and H-band too. 
because we know if you in the future at some dimension the excellent data are coming in so if we have near infrared data in this field that will give us more and more advantage so I think that's important to to continue the effort. I agree, I agree. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then Jenkin, could you quickly ask a question? So uh, I should read the pro the question right because my comment is here. So how did you debrand and associate the HSC sources with our current sources? What's the desired depth in JK? Oh, okay. these are two different questions. The first question is debranding. Debranding. Uh, association. Yeah. Association. Source matching. I think our sources, mm. HSC sources, right? Mm. With the current. Mm. So when we try to match, so when we try to find the optical counterpart for one uh, current sources, uh, we have this. We have some kind of this case. So we try to. In this case, we just try to closest to the neighbor. But if there is any uh, other sources near the closest encounter, we I think we didn't use use this. So I think uh, I don't remember exactly, but somehow. Mm, most of these cases are excluded in, in this catalog, 91,000 91, sources, sources in this catalog. So this kind of to blending is, I think, is not included. Okay. It's I think it's maybe, maybe next pro procedures we have to do about this. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Okay, so time's up. Thank you for excellent question. That's a difficult point. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Sonjin. Let's move on. So the.